Donald Trump has refused to act to contain the coronavirus, opting to sit on the sidelines as the pandemic ravages the country. But when it comes to waging violence against his own people, he's quickly risen to the occasion. Trump's law and order campaign is a distraction. Here are six ways Donald Trump has failed to attack the coronavirus, but instead has been attacking Americans. Number one, Trump has said he has no responsibility for the coronavirus pandemic, fobbing it off on governors and mayors whose repeated requests for federal help he's denied. Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. But when it comes to assaulting Americans, exercising their right to protest in defense of black lives, Trump is quick to assert strong leadership. He called the New York City Black Lives Matter mural a symbol of hate. And he has sent federal agents to terrorize protesters, even as mayors and governors urged him to stay out. Remove your federal officers from the streets of Portland. Number two, Trump has never offered a national strategy for testing, contact tracing, and isolating those who have the virus. He's provided insufficient funding for the schools he's trying to force open abysmal standards for reopening the economy, for purchasing critical supplies or helping the unemployed, and no clear message about what people and businesses should be doing. But he has a strategy for attacking Americans. He deployed unidentified federal agents against protesters in Portland, Oregon, where his secret police pulled them into unmarked vans and detained them without charges. Federal agents have since left the city causing violence to go down almost immediately. But Trump has threatened to send agents to Kansas City, Albuquerque, and Chicago. He also said he'd send them to New York City, Philadelphia, Detroit, Baltimore, and Oakland. Not incidentally, all cities with Democratic mayors, large black populations, and little violent unrest. Number three, Trump can't find enough federal personnel to do contact tracing for the coronavirus. But he's had no problem finding thousands of agents for his secret police drawn from the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security. Number four, public health authorities don't have adequate medical equipment to quickly analyze coronavirus tests. But Trump's police have everything they need to injure protesters, including military-style armored vehicles, tear gas, and tactical assault weapons. The best equipment, Trump says. Number five, there is ample legal authority for Trump to contain the coronavirus. But he's likely exceeded the legal authority for him to send federal troops into cities where mayors don't want them. The framers of the Constitution denied police power to the national government. The local officials in charge of public safety have rejected Trump's troops. The mayor of Portland was tear gassed. The mayor of Kansas City called the troops disgraceful. Albuquerque's mayor announced there is no place for Trump's secret police in our city. Chicago's mayor said she does not welcome dictatorship. Number six, Trump has tried to suppress the truth about the coronavirus. The White House instructed hospitals to report cases to the Department of Health and Human Services rather than to the Centers for Disease Control. Trump has muzzled the federal government's most prominent and trusted immunologist, Dr. Anthony Fauci, while the White House tried to discredit him. But the Trump campaign ran fictitious ads portraying cities as overrun by violent left-wing mobs. And Trump's shameless Fox News lackeys have consistently depicted protesters as rioters and the armed wing of the Democratic Party. More than 160,000 Americans have already died from the coronavirus. Tens of thousands more than would have died had Trump acted responsibly to contain it, and the economy is in free fall. No matter how hard he tries, we can't let Trump shift public attention from his failure to attack the virus to his attacks on Americans protesting to create an America where black lives matter and everyone can thrive. In fewer than 90 days, we must hold Donald Trump accountable.
at the ballot box.